Hello, I'm David and I'm Eddie and we are full-time gays and we are coming to you this week from Freedom Valley Campground in Ohio And we're gonna share with you some of the thoughts that we have about the place as well as give you a bit of a tour All right, hi everybody. Welcome again from Freedom Valley Campground in New London, Ohio. Ohio. Uh, we're further and further north. It's autumn. Some of the leaves are starting to change. We're by Cedar Point, which uh, unfortunately we didn't get a chance to go up and see because we had to work, but I would have loved to. <laughs> oh my gosh, I missed the roller coasters. All right, so uh, we're gonna do, if you haven't watched any of our review videos before, we're gonna just talk about the place a little bit, our experience here, and we're gonna rate it in four categories. Uh, again, subjective ratings. One is it's uh, big rig friendliness, yep. right? Like how easy is it to get to the campground? And then how easy is it to get and maneuver within the campground? We'll also talk about the, the facilities and grounds, what they have here to offer for their guests. Yep, and then we'll look at the vibe, which is again, the most totally subjective thing, but we're gonna do our best to kind of summarize like our impressions of the of the culture here, like the camp culture. Yep. And then we'll wrap things up by talking about the internet, which is super important for folks like us that are full-time RVers. And uh, with uh, without further ado, let's get started. All right. So let's start off with big break friendliness. Um, I think we decided to go ahead and kind of split that score out in two different sections. So it'll still be on a scale of ten, but we're gonna give uh, a scale of one to five on what it's like to get to the park. And then the rest of that five points will be what it's like to get in the park and set up on your site. Okay. Sounds like a smart idea. Yeah. So on the way to get in here, it's on a highway. I don't know if you can hear it behind us, but <laughs> there's some trucks that are passing by. Um, but it's super easy. It's um, straight, flat roads, no curves, wide lanes, and it was super easy to get up here. Yeah, US Highway. Uh, so it was an absolute breeze. The total five out of five for me on that. Um, now, when you're in the park, a lot of people say, oh, be careful when you go to Freedom Valley because there's a lot of hills and it goes down this big hill. Well, there, there is a huge hill, uh, not like huge as in length, but huge as in height. But that's where like the tenter area is and pop-ups go down there. And so it, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, to get into the campground, now you do kind of go up this little incline right off the road. And it is a one lane sort of drive. Yeah. And as we were pulling in, somebody was trying to come out. Well, we were bigger. So we won, and he backed up, <laughs> and we continued on. But that was a little, a little, uh, little clenching, and it, it was a very narrow lane. Uh, but it's paved, and I, I can't think of the last time I saw a gay campground with paved roads. At least the main roads are. Uh, getting to our site, there's uh, you pass by kind of like a transient site section, which are good for all but the biggest of rigs, and then they have a kind of a special site reserved for, uh, for people as big as us. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, we got onto the side. It was, a, it was a little challenging. It slopes a little bit uh, to the side. And, you know, we're trying to figure out, like, how we're going to get out tomorrow because there's this kind of lip next to the site in the road. Uh, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, but just in case, we're going to have some boards there just to avoid any issues. But uh, for me, five getting in, and I'll, you know, I'll call it a three in the park, so eight. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to agree with you on the five. It would be nice if it was a two-lane road, so we didn't have that fear of, uh, you know, what do we do if someone is coming the other way. I'm going to give it a four just because our site was really the only one that's kind of a challenge. The rest of the transient sites are actually pull-through sites if you get here first. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're backing in on the other side of it. So it's like two sites in one, kind of like uh, River Ridge was. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to give it a five on the getting here and a four of inside the park. Oh, okay, math. So you did give it a nine total. I gave it an eight total. So for big rig friendliness, that puts us at an 8.5. Yep, exactly. Okay. Uh, the next thing are the grounds and the facilities. And, you know, I got to say, <laughs> this park is immaculate. It is absolutely gorgeous. There is not a leaf out of place anywhere <laughs> in this park. They've... What the hell was that? <laughs> Never a dull moment at a game campground on a Friday night. Luckily that's, and it's a family weekend. There's women here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, with that said, uh, Michael and Jeff have had the place for 13 years. I think they used to be a couple. They're no longer a couple, but they seem to get along great. And they are gems of people. Absolutely. And uh, they, they continue to make improvements in the place. Uh, so they, they've planted a gazillion trees. They've got a gorgeous pond. They've got an 
epic sort of rec center. Uh, they call it the dance hall. Uh -huh. But then they built this patio behind it that half of it's covered, half of it's not. They've got like a built-in fire pit. It's paved. Paved. That, yeah. That concrete just went in, I think they said, at the beginning of this year. Really? Okay, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, lots of amenities. They've got a memorial garden. They've got, you said a dog park. I didn't see that one. They've got a dog park. They've got the massive pool area with tons of uh, area to lay out in the sun. And we're actually recording a video that on a deck that was just finished, I think, yesterday? No, this morning. This morning. Yeah, he was working on it when I was doing my uh, Beat Saber. My little Beat Saber on VR. Right. Uh, yeah. But they have a lake right behind us, and with that, they have paddle boats you can use and canoes. Um, there is a restaurant on site, the Buck, uh, Buckeye Barbecue. Sure. I think that's what it's called. Um, we haven't tried it yet, but they are opening tonight. We'll see if they have any keto options. Uh, but beyond that, uh, they've got this area, they've got uh, a, like almost 50 sites, I forget the exact number, that are perm sites or seasonal sites. And they're basically broken up into three different areas. You've got what, what a lot of the, the seasonals here refer to as like millionaire row <laughs> uh, or million dollar row because they're a really beautiful uh, destination trailers, fifth wheels, even bumper pulls, just gorgeous. They've got epic decks, they've got big long backyard like behind this place with you know sheds and stuff. Uh, then there's a place that's way more in the wood. There's more sites back there, and they're all in the woods. And now it's a gravel road, not concrete, but and it's narrow, but these are seasonals. They're only going in like once a year if they don't, you know, and that's assuming they pull out in the wintertime. Right. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it's beautiful. And, and there's a river that kind of acts as the back property border uh -huh. and they've got like two big levels we talked about that big hill well there's the part that we just described but then you go down that hill and then that's that big tenting area and there's a few cabins like rental cabins back there uh, there's a couple of uh, perm sites or seasonal sites but most of it is just wide open spaces for tenters and because we're up north that's a big difference up north is that there's a lot more tenters than places like in Texas um, even on non-holiday weekends because the weather is more agreeable and it's almost October and it was really cold <laughs> for uh, us Texans for us Texans <laughs> our first two nights here it was like in the 30s like the upper 30s but um, it's been gorgeous all week like right now it's probably 79 degrees not a cloud in the sky hasn't rained yeah it's been gorgeous um, so that's my part about the grounds what do you think yeah, I think the only thing I want to add on there is is the, the tenting area is done very well. Mm. Um, tons of very mature trees that have been there forever. Um, they added their own bathroom facilities for the tenting area. They have their own outdoor shower. They have their own outdoor sink. Um, most of the sites have electric and water, and it's right on the river. So you can't get much better of a scene while tent camping than that. Yeah, and it's only flooded twice in 13 years, so it's not like any heavy thunderstorm is gonna like cause half the park to go underwater. Right. So that's really good. And that flooding was from snow melt. Yeah, it snows up here, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one downside about the facilities, and literally, literally they're like, there's one. There's no... There's no hot tub. And... Okay, two things, because I had something else. <laughs> All right, so yeah, one of the downfalls is there's no hot tub here. Um, they've been trying to put one in. They were going to retrofit their in-ground pool to put one in, but it was way too costly. And as a matter of fact, the brand new deck that was built that we're filming from right now, uh, its original intended purpose was to be a deck for a hot tub. But apparently they've had some issues with, I don't know if it's the town or the county, and getting the proper approvals for it. So. Just know there's no hot tub here, but there's a nice, beautiful pool to enjoy. Yeah, and the only other downfall is that they don't have sewer. And uh, I mean, they've got a dump station. So when you're pulling out, or when you're leaving the campground, but because those roads are so narrow, like we would be blocking the road for like 20 minutes and it's the only road <laughs> in right. and out. Uh, but they do have a honey wagon and uh, a lot of the seasonals, they pay a, a flat rate for the season and then they'll get weekly pump out service. And that's for gray and for black. And that's, you know, it's fine uh, to get that done once a week, uh, especially the black tank, but the gray tank, especially if you want to use your own shower, if you want to do, you know, if you do dishes, uh, those fill up, at least for us, way faster than a week. And so we've been uh, rationing water, <laughs> showering every day, every other day. Yep, every other day. And uh, our tanks filled up today and they came in, uh, they came by with the honey wagon and, and emptied us out, which was nice. Uh, now we don't have to do it tomorrow morning. But, um, 
you know, it's not the end of the world because I mean, the place is packed. There's like a wait list of 40 something people. Yep. And I mean, that's just one small thing. And there's other gay, other campgrounds don't have sewer as well. So on grounds and uh, facilities, I'm going nine. I'm going to match that score. Yeah, so nine. Okay, so eight and a half and nine. Right. All right, let's talk about the vibe. All right, so the vibe here, when we arrived here on Sunday afternoon, the park was pretty much already cleared out for the week. Um, we got ourselves set up and we got up to, hopped on our segways, took a tour around the park to see everything. And I have to say, we, at least I did. I don't know if we both did, but at least I did. I unfairly prejudged what the vibe was gonna be at this park. With having something like Millionaire Row and all these sites with big, massive, expensive fifth wheels and you know, whatever, I literally thought, oh boy, this crowd's gonna be a bit on the bougie side. Is that the technical term for it? It is in full-time gaze. <laughs> um, but after we got done doing our self-tour, we actually went over to the pool and within seconds, someone struck up a conversation with us and my mind was totally changed from there. And every single person that we have met since then has been the nicest, sweetest, most inviting people that I... Everybody. E everybody. Every single person we've met has been so sweet. There was uh, on Thursday nights, every every Thursday, they do what they call it an underwear party. It's a little cold for underwear. <laughs> right. But they, they basically get together and they do shots. And in this case, it was around a campfire. And I think most of the people at the campground were there. And we showed up, of course, and uh, we were welcomed with open arms. And they do this every single week. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the culture here is so amazing. Uh, as large as this place is, I'm sure there's kind of like subsets of friends and, and you know, not clicks, but but there, it's not clickiness. There's no clickiness here at all uh, that we've seen anyway. Yeah. I mean, as a matter of fact, that party on Thursday night, I think we had like seven different invites from seven different people, all to make sure we were gonna show up. Oh yeah, yeah, They all, every time we'd see somebody, don't forget, there's an underwear party tonight, there's gonna be shots. Uh, yeah, so I mean, that was really great. This is friends and family weekend, so it's like the one weekend a year when women are allowed, and it's Friday afternoon, so they're just starting to pour in, so it's really weird looking around and seeing women. But I think it's a good thing that they have that, and yeah. I think most uh, all-male campgrounds do have one every year. I know Grizzly Pines does, uh, as do others. But uh, this place gets packed during the summertime. Uh, as we've been told, any, any given weekend, there's at least a couple hundred folks here on an event weekend, it can easily uh, go into the 400s, approaching 500. Uh, and that's that's a huge crowd. And they have the facilities to back it up. They've got the reputation. Their wait list is like 30 something long to get a seasonal site I think here. It's 40 something long. 40 something 40 long? 40 something long, yeah. Leave it to you to remember things about size. How can you forget about something about a number? That's true, I'm a numbers geek. Uh, <laughs> so, I, no, I mean, the vibe is totally subjective, is that he said, because it's just based on your own experience and it's based on one moment in time. And so, with that said though, I, I was absolutely blown away uh, by this place. And you're right, it was a little intimidating at first. Uh, it's not bougie. And Millionaire Row, I think, is a false moniker because, yeah, they're nicer campers, but these are folks that, that camp every year. And so it makes sense, you know, to, to kind of get something. We did the same thing before we became full-timers. Um, People are absolutely great. And so I'm gonna get, it's as close to a 10 as I can get. I'm gonna give it a 10. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's no flaw there that I can find. So again, 10. Yeah, I mean, it was just fantastic. Uh, anything else about the vibe? Not that I can think of. All right, you wanna talk about the internet? The interwebs? The interwebs. Um, so if you have Verizon, you are not gonna have a problem at all. Huh. Um, we didn't even put up our WeBoost to uh, boost our signal at all. Nope. You ran a speed test. What was the number? 97, I think, megabits per second on a 4G LTE Verizon hotspot, non-boosted. Yeah, you can't beat that. Um, we did try the campground's Wi-Fi. Um, we haven't gone around to every nook and cranny of the park to see if it works everywhere, but you also ran a speed test on that. And that Can you was... hear me now? Oh, where's my cocktail? So you ran a speed Good. test. On <laughs> <laughs> you ran a speed test on the campground's Wi-Fi. It was it was uh, midweek. It was I think three. So adequate, but I don't know what that would look like on a busy weekend. And they have repeaters. Yeah, uh, all over the park. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know about all. I haven't seen them all over, but I know they're here, like by the social hall. Yep. Uh, maybe there's more, but um, probably good for in a bind. 
Yeah, yeah. So on the rating, you know, if we were going just on Verizon, I'm gonna say a 10. We don't know what at and signal is like, um, but based on the Wi-Fi, but we know. That, we know. Sorry, we know that Sprint doesn't have a good signal. We did hear that. Yeah. But does Sprint ever have a good signal? Who has Sprint? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, the <laughs> campground Wi-Fi. It's there. It's available. It's a little bit on the slow side. So I'm gonna give it a nine. Yeah, uh, I'll go eight um, because it's a little bit on the slow side. At least the time that we tested it. Um, but yeah, if you've got Verizon, it's great. I can't speak for at and I, I wish I would have thought of asking somebody. But yeah, eight. It, I mean, our internet, spot on, fabulous, good. Uh, not everybody would be based on who you have as a provider. Um, so that's eight and a half, nine, ten, and you gave it a nine, right? Yeah, so eight and a half. So for the internet, eight and a half. So yeah. it's so far, it's our highest scoring campground. This place is, I, I see why this place has the reputation that it does. Absolutely. I mean, it is beautiful. People are friendly, easy to get to. Not crazy expensive. Not crazy expensive. If you come here, you're going to have a great time. Yeah, and the owners are fantastic folks. They're highly engaged. Michael works in the office. He reminds me of Dr. Anthony Fauci. <laughs> um, just love him. And uh, also Jeff, who gave you a tour of some of the yeah, some I mean, of the rentals and stuff. Yeah, I mean, me through all the cabins and opened them all up for me and showed me all the little things that they've been adding, like the dog park and told me the history of the, the dance hall, how it was just when they bought the park, it was only half of what it is today and they've expanded it and they put the back patio on and these guys don't rest. No, no, they really don't rest. I think Michael walks the park every morning to make sure that everybody that's here is supposed to be here. So he felt secure. Um, so I know it's not at all obvious, so we should probably ask, would we want to come back here again? Let me think. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, obviously, this is going to have to be a summer retreat for us since they're closed in the winter for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, I would love to be able to figure out a way to book early and get here on a, like a major weekend so we can really experience what this park has to offer for us. Yeah, I hope they make the site more level. That would be nice. It's on a hill. It is on a hill, but they, they can fix that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I completely agree. This this place is a gem. Uh, it's it's everything that I would think a, a gay campground should be. The community is vibrant. There's there's uh, a mixture between the the types of folks that are happy to sit around a fire and just you know have a cocktail and chillax. There's parties where the thumpa thumpa happens. Uh, there's there's really something here for everybody. Has been my impression. Yeah. Um, absolutely great place. So overall opinion. Totally. Epson. 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 Absolutely epic is Epson, apparently. <laughs> Did you start drinking without me? Maybe. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> All right, so that's it. They're very good for Freedom Valley. Next week, we are going to talk about... Actually, we're going to go to uh, visit uh, family in Michigan. But uh, then we're going to go to Camp Buckwood in Indiana and spend two weeks there. So that'll be the next gay campground review. Until then, thank you so much, everybody, for giving us your time. And we are in it together. In it together. <laughs>